All right, guys, let's do this. Good morning, YouTube. What's up, everybody? Hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. Every now and again, a brand releases an insane shoe, one that like I could not even think up if I tried. And this time around, Hoka's done it. Before 2023, some runners were getting a little bit tired of the Hoka formula. They said they were tired of Hoka just using straight EVA in every shoe and they wanted them to use a more high-end premium foam like Piba and make a real race shoe that people could compete in. But then in 2023, Hoka released the Rocket X2 and this is a pretty damn good super shoe in my opinion. But then these other brands like Saucony, Adidas, Nike, they were coming out with super duper shoes like the Saucony Endorphin Elite, the Adidas Prime X Strung, and the Nike Alpha Fly. Hoka took a look at all those and they said, hold my beer. And here, my friends, we have the Hoka Cielo X1. Before we do a deep dive on the Cielo X1, I do wanna thank all of you who subscribed to the channel. We finally hit 20K subs and I am so pumped about that. So thank you, and if you're not subscribed, if you could please go and do so. We're trying to climb on up, trying to get as many subs as possible. Every sub is appreciated. And if one video a week on YouTube is not enough for you, you can also go follow me on Instagram, at Run Like Heller. I'm posting all kinds of content over there, live content, running content, funny memes, reels, you know, all the things people do on Instagram, I'm doing it too. All right, back to the show. This is, an absolutely insane looking shoe. I, it kind of looks like the rainbow fish. Anybody remember that book? Or like a rainbow threw up all over it, but I mean that in the best way possible because I actually think this is such a sick looking shoe. It's supposed to be faster than the Rocket X2, more aggressive than the Rocket X2, and provide you with more responsive cushioning. Basically, the idea is that if you wanna race, you're taking out the Cielo X1. But in my testing of this shoe, I have found that it is capable of so much more than what it is marketed for. So we're gonna talk all about that today, but first, of course, you gotta watch the run footage. get started, I do want to let you know that this shoe was sent to me by Hoka. However, they're not going to see this video before you. They can't tell me what to say and all of my opinions are completely my own. I could look at this all day. As always, let's start with the upper of the Cielo X1. Hoka is using a knit construction for the upper of the Cielo X1. It's not really that stretchy type of knit, it's more structured. In the midfoot, there aren't really a ton of overlays, but they did provide a knit gusseted tongue, which does help with lockdown through the midfoot. And if we go to the back, the heel counter is fairly sturdy for this type of upper. So right when I took this shoe out of the box and put it on my foot, I was like, oh no, is this shoe too big? But I don't think it's too big. I think the sensation that I was feeling is that this upper, like I said, is pretty structured. It's not that type of knit that's going to sit directly on top of your fit, foot and kind of conform to it. It's already sort of molded in its own way. So my foot was sitting in the shoe, but I wasn't feeling the upper. Like there's space between my foot and the upper, if that makes sense. I think this is just another case of me having a super narrow foot and having to cinch those laces down to get a really good fit through the midfoot of the shoe. But I will say they don't make it easy to cinch these laces down because these laces are pretty bad. Hard to tell, but they're thin and almost like plasticky. They don't stay tied very well. You can just take these laces out and put your own in and you won't have this problem at all. But yeah, didn't really love the laces. And as you guys know, I don't usually like uppers that have the padding inside of the shoe like this. But the good news is, is that I didn't get 
any rubbing against my Achilles at all. In terms of breathability, this shoe is breathable. I mean, the knit is pretty thin, but I don't think it's the most breathable super duper shoe that I've ever tried. Uh, that being said though, it's not a deal breaker. I mean, there is generally some air passing through, so it shouldn't be too bad. I did not have any issues with hot spots, blisters, or irritation in the upper of the Cielo X1. I think if you swap out the laces, this is generally a pretty good upper, and I think the design is just top notch. Let's talk about the midsole of the Cielo X1. We got two layers of their Piba midsole foam. It is their highest energy return foam. We have a winged carbon plate here, and that is supposed to create a little bit more stability, a little bit more propulsion. But Hoka knew this upper and all this foam and this carbon plate, it was gonna make the shoe a little bit heavy. So the way they decided to alleviate that problem was to make dynamic cutouts in the foam. That's what they're calling them. There are a few shoes that I step into and automatically think, whoa. When I stepped into the CLX1 for the first time, it was like wow times 100. As I've been running in this shoe, and I have about 30 miles in it right now, I have grown to absolutely love it. It just makes running so enjoyable. So during the course of the week, I've taken it on an eight mile easy-ish run. I've taken it on a five mile easy run with strides at the end of it. And today I did a workout in the shoe to see what it would be like at faster paces because that's what it's really supposed to be for according to Hoka. What I discovered about the Cielo X1 is that it is so much more than just a racing shoe. I don't know if Hoka is gonna like that, but I gotta speak my truth here. So when I took the shoe out the other day for my eight miles, it made the miles just tick by with ease. The bounce from the two layers of Piba with that carbon plate just makes for a sensation that is so enjoyable. It's extremely responsive and extremely cushioned, so you're getting the best of both worlds. I could absolutely see myself taking this on like a double digit. Like if I was training for a marathon, I could take this on a 20 mile run. No problem, no questions asked. The other thing I forgot to mention is that the shoe has a pretty aggressive rocker. I was also a little nervous about that, taking it on an easy run, but it seems to complement the easy run really nicely. It just helps to get you rolling in your stride. It feels like less of a slog. And uh, I think it just helped with my turnover, honestly. I mean, it was pretty hard to beat for that run. And I've also taken it out on shorter, easier runs. And again, same situation. It just feels so good to go that pace in this shoe, which is the exact opposite of what this shoe is made for. But your main question probably is, how does this feel when you're going faster? Now, I know a lot of people online have been talking about the weight of this shoe and if it feels super heavy on your foot when you're running and, you know, kind of what that does to the fact that this is supposed to be a super duper shoe. It's supposed to be for racing. Holding these two shoes in hand, it is definitely safe to say that this feels way lighter. However, what I will say to kind of counter that is that this has way more energy return and bounce and spring than the Rocket X2 does. So while it might feel a little bit heavier underfoot, I would argue that it's honestly not gonna matter because of how much more you're getting here. So for today's workout, I did a two mile warm up and then I did eight two minute intervals at 7.15 to 7.30 pace with one minute at nine minute mile pace in between those intervals and then a one mile cool down. It did really well. When it was time to go, the shoe knew it was game time and the energy return I felt when I was stepping onto that plate with that aggressive rocker, it felt like pogo stick, energy return. I didn't feel like this shoe was weighing me down at all. I didn't feel like it was preventing me from going faster. If anything, it was just helping the turnover of my legs like that much more. I also found that the stability of the Cielo X1 is a lot better than the other super duper shoes on the market like the Endorphin Elite and the definitely the Prime X. That could definitely be because of the wing plate or maybe it's a slightly wider platform, uh, but my foot seemed to get along with it a lot better. The only thing I would say about the mid so that I don't really like is because it's so wild it's a little hairy going around turns so gotta be a little aware of that don't want to roll an ankle or anything crazy like that something I just had to keep in the back of my mind while I was going at those faster clips. It's gonna be way more versatile than some of the other shoes in this category, and it's gonna be way more versatile for different kinds of runners with different foot types, running strides, and paces. And I certainly don't think anybody is gonna be saying that Hoka is putting out boring shoes anymore if they try the Cielo X1. Honestly, guys, like, if I could wear this shoe every single day for every single run, I, I would. 
I really would. Turning the Cielo X1 over, you can see we got a pretty good amount of rubber here, all that blue that you see. The traction on the shoe is really good. Like I thought it gripped onto the pavement pretty well. It's been in moist conditions because it's been kind of rainy here, uh, dry ones, it's been on gravel, that sort of thing, sand. And uh, yeah, it's held up just fine. I'm not really seeing any signs of wear except maybe at the tip of the toe box. And the exposed foam also looks pretty good. I think the outsoles of these types of shoes are pretty important because you wanna uh, inspire confidence in the runner and not make them feel like they gotta slow down because the outsole is gonna slip out from under, under them. And I do not think you're gonna have that problem here. So uh, outsole's good for me. What? isn't so good for me and might not be so good for you is the price of the Cielo X1 and that is $275. I know that is an exceptional amount of money for many people out there. But what I will say is that if you have $275 and you're looking for a shoe that is race day ready, has got all of the makings of a fast shoe, but can also take you longer distances at a slower clip, can also be a tempo day workout shoe and everything in between that, then 275 feels slightly more reasonable. If you do have $275 and you're looking for a shoe just like this, if you wanna pick up a pair, I'll put a link in the description of this video. Keep in mind that is an affiliate link with Running Warehouse, which doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can keep making these videos. I'm also not suggesting you wear this shoe for every single run. It might not be the best idea, but I kinda want to and they kind of have been. Just some food for thought. I truly love this shoe. I know it's early, but I think it's gonna be one of my favorites from the year. And if the first version of it was this good, I'm very excited to see how the second version will be. And I hope and most likely would guess these laces will be the first things to go. Are you gonna be picking up a pair of the Hoka Cielo X1? What are your thoughts on it? Is it too expensive? Is it just not your vibe? Is it everything you ever dreamed of? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. Well, everyone, that concludes this video on the Hoka Cielo X1. If you enjoyed it, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, Hit the notifications bell so you can find out every time I upload a new video. Do you love the look? Do you hate the look? I love it. I have another video for you next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like heller. See you next time. The Cielo X1 makes the Rocket X2 look like a tiny baby shoe here. <laughs> kind of crazy.